Although Roma are the largest ethnic minority in Europe, they still experience high level of racism and have to deal with many societal issues. Additionally, Roma are being represented in a very stereotypical way in the media and art world. The Roma theater has more than a century long past with a lot of active professional theater groups in many European countries, but unfortunately, they are still hardly known. The Roma Heroes Theatre Festival, initiated by the Independent Theatre Hungary, is the only international Roma theatre encounter in the world, which have been organizing every year since 2017. Some of the present artists and their work are introduced in our series. Today, my guest is David Schwartz, the director of the play called You Haven't Seen Anything, and Alex Pife, the author and performer of the play. Hi guys, how are you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, so I will start with the first question and it's super simple. Please, could you briefly uh, summarize what the play is about? Well, uh, our play investigates the means and uh, terms in which uh, uh, Daniel Dumitrake, a young man of uh, 26, uh, has been murdered in the police station number 10 in Bucharest, Romania. <clears throat> and uh, it is a story of uh, this uh, uh, young man who has uh, practiced uh, something very usual uh, <laughs> here in Bucharest, which is uh, for uh, people who don't uh, really have uh, opportunities to get uh, jobs and uh, proper jobs, they practice the street service of parking cars. This guy, Daniel, was only 26 when uh, he was uh, restrained on the street by the police force, uh, which actually knew, knew, knew the person, knew his occupation, and they uh, dragged him to the police station where he got beaten up and uh, he deceased in uh, he died in the in the police station later that night well we investigated and documented the whole thing and uh, we followed the uh, legal process uh, which uh, took place it was a long, uh, long uh, process. And then after a few years, uh, the policeman responsible, one of the policemen involved in, the, in this tragedy, uh, got sentenced to seven years of prison. Of course, we launched the play while still in process. And uh, we tried to investigate the particular circumstances under which uh, this happened. And uh, we got to talk to the family, talk to everybody involved in, uh, in the trial, and uh, we put up the play. Yeah, David, the director, he directed it, and he could also uh, uh, tell a little bit more if he feels necessary. Mm -hmm. I think it's what is important to, to mention is that uh, uh, in, the pro, in, the, in our process uh, of uh, research, uh, we, uh, we uh, discovered or we found out what we had already uh, in some way uh, suspected. Uh, that uh, it is this intersection of uh, ethnicity and uh, poverty also, uh, that uh, bring this uh, that, uh, that brought the situation uh, to uh, of, of Daniel Dumitrakis' uh, death. So basically, it is it, the uh, police is profiling uh, Roma persons and also profiling uh, impoverished uh, impoverished uh, persons uh, and uh, it's uh, most people who get uh, beaten up tortured uh, and uh, 
even even killed as in uh, as in this uh, situation is uh, many times uh, roma people or people who look uh, uh, look roma so looking darker skinned people uh, and uh, it is also um, very much a uh, class discrimination it is uh, more or less uh, the police is actually doing uh, the job of uh, of uh, cleaning uh, the city where cleaning means uh, punishing the undesirable uh, persons the person and uh, in this category we get all kinds of informal workers from parking attendees uh, to uh, sex workers uh, to other uh, to other groups of uh, of people that uh, don't uh, match so to speak uh, with the with this um, official uh, picture of Bucharest uh, as a city of actually of a, as a city of the middle class or as a city of the elite so it is uh, this uh, intersection of uh, blatant racism and uh, and uh, a class uh, and a class uh, uh, discrimination that uh, leads to this sort of tragedies thank you i had the chance to to see the the play already in budapest and it was very tough um, alex you also perform in the play can I ask you uh, what's the most difficult or challenging part for you? Well, uh, of course, it was uh, getting in touch with the family that was in the process of documentation that we we had on display, and uh, yeah, I guess that was the first the first part where. Uh, I really, it, it was, it, for me, it was when I was, this happened when, uh, and the play was one of my, my first experiences in, uh, in uh, social and political uh, theater. And it was the, maybe one of the first times when I really got to um, have a direct uh, discussion and uh, get in touch with uh, the real, the real thing on the street as a documentarist uh, and uh, it was the first for me and the the real the real grief of the family of course was the thing that um, was I, uh, for me in that in that moment a little bit uh, wow a little bit of a shock you know because mm -hmm. uh, that's what the play does it goes into details with uh, not uh, not very nice thing, things that can happen to to impoverished and to the poor and uh, to the Roma, of course. <clears throat> well, uh, besides that, uh, I don't know. It's uh, yeah. I guess I'm really connected with the family because that's what impacted me the most in the documentation. So when I get to play the family and uh, his, uh, especially his uh, cousin, uh, that's where I feel it most, uh, most, the most powerful connection. Yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you. Okay, so now it's a question to both of you. Could you please share a few sentences about your artwork. What is your art creed? What are um, your principle in in your artwork? Uh, well, uh, for me, I'm no no longer a beginner in uh, this uh, in this kind of uh, of theater, and I guess this is what I will do. As, as a professional um, for, a, for a long period of time uh, from now on because um, this is how uh, I really get to be uh, in, in the society and to represent myself 
and uh, by representing yeah. myself, my values, my my uh, my political views, which are uh, related to the human, related to uh, Roma tradition, related to the story and uh, the um, how to say it, the um, um, poverty issue. I guess these are my three uh, directions uh, in which I want to investigate and go deeper. Of course, uh, it's always mm, the new forms of uh, of practicing it in theater that you have to. I have to to be connected with and uh, be be. Um, in uh, in charge somehow you know it's uh, discovering new for forms of uh, expression that go a little bit further um, in, than uh, the classical uh, ways of uh, making theater thank you david uh, yes uh, uh, as alex mentioned uh, i also um see myself as a political artist and I see theater as a means uh, of uh, expressing uh, political uh, ideas uh, and uh, of achieving, uh, if possible, a sort of uh, social and uh, political change uh, in, the, in the society. So I am very interested in the contradictions of the present uh, day uh, capitalist uh, society and of the different uh, conflicts and tensions uh, that uh, that uh, appear in this uh, society and at the same time i am not doing this from an objective position but i am doing this from the trying to trying to uh, deal with these issues from the subjective uh, position of the persons who suffer the consequences so it is a sort of uh, even is it is sort of uh, doing the theater that is not only about uh, the oppressed uh, persons or categories, but this is in uh, some way uh, seeing the relate, uh, seeing the analyzing the relations of oppression and the relations of power in uh, in the society, but from an uh, let's say emancipatory uh, perspective. I try to sum it up shortly. <laughs> Thank you. I would also ask both of you, what motivates you? Like what what are what and who uh, inspiring you uh, or inspired you in the past um, and not just your, in, your, in your career, but also in your life? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, tough question. Because <laughs> um, I guess what motivates me is uh, the need the need of uh, of reaction, the need of uh, saying things, the need of protesting, the need to let people know uh, of uh, of a different uh, uh, story than what is offered by the um, by the classical ways of uh, com communication. You know, even the news today. I don't think they really are the news. I think uh, we, we are fed up with with this official uh, story, and uh, we, it it is kind of being alternative. It is the need to 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 dig dig, dig, dig deeper uh, than what is offered uh, by official channels. It, that's uh, similar for theatrical and uh, politics, you know. <clears throat> Of course, uh, in the end, in the in the in the beginning, for me, uh, I just told you that, uh, with this play, particularly, it was the first uh, real occasion to go uh, to go out and uh, really take um, do, go into action. You know, uh, start documenting, start uh, being what it means to be uh, a political actor. And uh, for me, it really was uh, David Schwartz that first uh, 
uh, got me introduced to this. Uh, it was his place where I first, uh, where I first got in uh, in touch with this uh, political theater thing, and uh, this got to uh, represent myself also. Uh, now, what motivates me is uh, also the need for my kids. I have two kids, um, and they're still young. And I kind of try to offer them a different perspective also, you know, with what I do, with what I try to build up here uh, with my, with my uh, profession, so to say. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's it. Thank you. Mm. Okay, so uh, first about uh, what um, motivates uh, what motivates uh, me. Uh, I guess uh, this motivation comes from two uh, two uh, complementary factors. It is uh, the uh, okay. So I'm sorry. I have to uh, stop for one minute, but I'm coming back. <laughs> okay. You need to do some editing. <laughs> It's not. It's not just me. <laughs> you have to edit more than. One. <clears throat> Alex, did you fill in the time or no? <laughs> You're okay. Okay. Um, so um, regarding my uh, my motivation, yes, uh, it is. It comes from two uh, complementary factors. Uh, first is a sort of indignation towards the city situation of the society, which uh, you can see in uh, everyday uh, in everyday life, in every aspect of um, my family, of my community, of the of uh, the city where we live in, and uh, now as we live in sort of a global uh, in a global uh, village, you can see it, uh, it. It's if you want to be a little bit uh, conscious and a little bit well informed, it's obvious that. Uh, there is uh, the huge uh, disparities, contradictions, and struggles in the in the society um, are uh, are uh, uh, bringing us to a sort of uh, moment of crisis. And uh, the experience we all had uh, this uh, this year uh, with uh, the um, this pandemic situation is only exacerbating something that was sort of feeling in. Uh, sort of it was a feeling that you could have uh, in the in the society so first is obviously a sort of need to contribute to, to a change uh, for the better because the situation is become sort of unbearable and uh, the other factor is uh, also a sort of it's a sort of a tradition also in uh, in uh, Mm, so there is a left-wing tradition in theater and there is a left-wing uh, tradition in politics uh, uh, that uh, sort of uh, inspires uh, and inspired uh, me uh, for, uh, for many years uh, already. And uh, yeah, regarding sources of inspiration, I have had, uh, I have so many and so different and it's, uh, the per when I have met uh, people who got evicted from their homes and uh, we struggled uh, together to uh, to support uh, their uh, fight, uh, their struggle against evictions, this has inspired me a lot uh, in my work. It happened when I was a very young artist. It inspired me a lot in uh, in uh, in my work, and th those people inspired me. When I have met uh, people who are uh, now. Uh, 90 or 95 years old and who have been part of the anti-fascist resistance in the second world war this has inspired me a lot uh, as well but on the other hand there is a whole uh, tradition of political theater from uh, Bertolt uh, Brecht uh, and Erwin Piscator to present day artists uh, who uh, also uh, inspire me uh, me quite a lot so uh, there is a big um, yeah range of uh, of uh, inspirations and also uh, a deep uh, sort of a deep motivation that comes from the structural context in which we are in. 
Thank you. Um, before my last question, I would also ask, um, what do you think about Roma theater, Alex? Uh, what does it mean to you? Uh, do you consider it necessary to, to have Roma their own institutions? Or what do you think about it? And also, David, feel free to, to add your thoughts. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, uh, the problem with the Roma theater is, um, let's put it this way. Uh, Romania has a long history. Uh, Romanian Romas do have a long history here in Romania of oppression and I mean, for the just for the record to say so, uh, Roma have been slaves in Romania for 500 years. Have a 500 year history of the meanest and toughest uh, form of social exploitation exploitation by by human human race. You know, it's 500 years. Not until now, it is just 150 years when the, the abolition of uh, slavery happened. No compensatory measures have been taken by the state. Not at that time, not uh, even to this day. The state have, has, has not recognized uh, the slavery, the history of slavery. They are not recognizing, maybe in the last years, they tried to kind of um, mime you know that they do so by uh, mentioning the roma as a holocaust vic uh, holocaust uh, uh, victims you know and uh, bringing uh, things to this day uh, there is no uh, state uh, theater for roma actors in romania budapest has one everybody has one uh, other communities in Romania have have it, and there are. We are talking about, uh, for example, the Jewish community, which is somewhere. David could uh, tell us more exact figures, but is something related to the thousands, maybe some thousand people in Romania. We're talking, and they have state theater, not since now, but since 60 or 70 years ago. I hope I'm not uh, get, uh, getting the, the figures. Uh, 71. 71, yes. Okay. Uh, Roma do not, and I repeat, do not have uh, such a uh, state theater. The, it would be an obligation, a moral obligation for the Romanian state to offer the conditions of having this theater. But uh, this doesn't happen. And this is not the only thing. Uh, Roma actors in Romania are only uh, a few hand of people. Uh, why? Is there access uh, to, to institutions? Uh, do they? How, why? Two million people in, in Romania, you know, two, two million Roma people, or com a huge community. Well, <clears throat> the that is the more the most. Uh, um, pregnant issue uh, of of the of the Roma theater. In these conditions, all we can do is uh, build up uh, identities and build up uh, theater communities. And this is not possible if there is not understanding and uh, acceptance within the members of the com community and having a common goal, which should be, I think. Uh, instituting this important uh, presence in the cultural life of a country. You know, this is what upsets me the most, the non-existence of this state theater. Well, we'll have to do it on our own. It is only a problem of uh, building up a force strong enough to demand that and strong enough to even create it by itself. Of course, this is beautiful theory. And uh, until this happens, a lot of uh, uh, a lot will uh, will have to be done by particulars, Roma actors. And by that I mean Roma actors. 
that have to build up communities, that have to bring up this issue until it's uh, uh, solved. And this would be a recognition more than necessary uh, from behalf of the state. This is my opinion. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Lastly, I would ask you, what is your future plan? What are your future goals in life regarding the career, your career? And it's a question to both of you. Um, I think now it is uh, more than ever uh, a problem of surviving as independent artists. And for me as an independent artist, uh, surviving is what I did before, surviving before the crisis, I mean, the pandemics. And surviving, it will have to be from now on till, I don't know, you cannot really tell in this, in this time what will be within the next six months because of this uh, huge, huge uh, health problem that occurred. Uh, occurred. But uh, on a long term, of course, uh, I will keep making social and political uh, theater as a mean of living, I don't know, as both of a means of living and a, a personal statement. Thank you. David? Yes, uh, for me as well is uh, now, especially the, this, this, uh, in this time that everything is so uncertain, I think uh, it, we must reflect more on what are our long-term goals and uh, objectives. Uh, and uh, it is also a time of uh, reflecting upon uh, our past and uh, what have we done so far, what has worked, what hasn't worked. So it is sort of a moment uh, of uh, analyzing and, of, uh, and a moment of uncertainty, which I think we have to assume and uh, to reflect more and maybe uh, project less or project more in terms of goals than in terms of uh, projects or particular uh, particular projects. So uh, just as, um, as main uh, goals for me, of course, it is very important to continue my work as a political artist and as a member of a political art uh, theater collective. Um, but on the other hand, uh, I think more and more about uh, pedagogy and about how to uh, transmit things to a next uh, generation and how do we do that uh, the political uh, theater that has emerged in uh, Romania with uh, quite a, a big uh, success in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, how do we do that it, is, it will not be just uh, a fashion of a generation, but, uh, it will, but how to make it a uh, long, uh, long term uh, and institutionalized uh, way of uh, making theater and of uh, relating to society and uh, to the problems of the, of the society. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for the discussion. It was very interesting. Now you can see the performance called You Haven't Seen Anything, directed by David Schwartz, written and performed by Alex Hippel. Enjoy the show. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.